What's poppin'? My name is Ed, and welcome back to the channel. I've been on leave for like a month, so let me go over some updates before I go on. Get used to the new hair. I'm bald. Time it. One minute. Go. So I started off reading, I believe it was The Shining. The Shining was, I finished The Shining. Wonderful book. I'm gonna review that today. That's gonna be great. Then I read Song of Susanna, which was pretty awesome as well. Finished that. I'm gonna review that. Good Omens. I just read that too. I'm gonna review that soon. And then I started Dark Tower, but then I got really bored of Dark Tower, so I'm not reading that yet. And then I just left it until Oathbringer, which I'm still not done. I'm sorry about that. Look at that. We, we still got a lot more to go. So hold on for that. That'll be done soon, though, because I have time now. And then while I was in India, because that's where I went on vacation, I started reading two books, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dave Carnegie. And I also read Seven Habits of Highly Effective People or something like that. I read that too. And those are like part ways, so I'm reading them with overtime, so that's still going on. But as soon as I finish Dark Tower, I know that I'm specifically gonna go and read this. What is this? Champion. So, Champion. I'm gonna read that soon. That's gonna happen, all three of them, very, very soon. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and finish the new fourth book that's gonna come up soon. So that is my one minute review. Now we're gonna actually review The Shining. Welcome back, Stephen King. We got The Shining review finally back up. Thank you guys for bearing with me all this time. I'm sorry I haven't got a review up, but I've been reading like crazy. Had a lot of fun in India. We're gonna go ahead and actually review, I think one of my favorite books of Stephen King now, The Shining. When I came into the book, I came into it with reviews from some of my close friends and my teachers, and these people have been telling me bad things. They say it's one of the worst books, really lazy, really boring, stuff like that. So I kind of went into it with like a bad expectation in my mind, but turns out it's actually Wonderful, just great. It was my English teacher too though, so that tells a lot about the education system, you know? But essentially what they said was that it's really boring, nothing really happens, and me, actually, I came into this book thinking a lot about thematic stuff, going into like a lot of interesting thematic stuff, specifically like old Disney movies. I was looking through those and I was finding those really, really interesting from a thematic point of view, because I was really like forcing myself to think, what does this represent? What does that represent? What does all this represent? And it's so interesting. I really recommend if you guys haven't done that in your life, do that, like learn it. Jordan Peterson got me into it. Watch some of those, just specific like ancient biblical tales. Those are just wonderful. So this is one of those books that I just dove into, trying to think like, what does all of this represent? And from what I could tell, not that much, but there were a good amount of actually properly fleshed out themes and I really enjoyed all of those because that was really, really fun to see. Now The Shining really excels for me for certain reasons. One of them namely being that I haven't read Stephen King in a good long time. Like I think the last Stephen King book I read, that was probably gonna be like a Dark Tower book and I really didn't like that book. I think it was number four. It was like the, the Wolves of the Kella, I believe. And I really didn't like that book. So I just had a bad taste in my mouth from the last Stephen King book. And I just read a bunch of other books, fancy specifically, more like a, a Stormlight, basically. That's it. And so when I came back into this book, it really surprised me how wonderfully articulate the man is because he's just like none other. Like, you know, a lot of people, they, most writers, honestly, they're really articulate. That's kind of their job. And so people like Brandon Sanderson, fairly really good you know they're good at that they're not bad they're very good but then you go into like somebody like Stephen King you know Stephen King my man is like a verbal connoisseur he's a he's just incredible he has these amazing metaphors he has this amazing way of telling a story that just makes it feel so so personal like like it's not a fantasy epic anymore like I'm, I'm so tired of that from now that just this massive world with characters you can't relate to and just so much stuff you have to memorize instead of enjoying and it's really annoying for me and then you go to Stephen King who just does that personal like three character story over this fairly long it's not that long but it's like a it's, it's not short you know so fairly long book and he really goes into like the depths of their like horrors and their pasts and their just emotions and them going crazy just really like deep I there's one quote that I read about him that's just perfectly for this situation. It's uh, something to do with put your characters through hell and then bring them back or something like that. And he's really not that famous for that quote, but that is a really good quote because he does that in all his books. And I'm so glad I got back into that because it's just so wonderful. And I guess that's what I really love about the story. The prose itself makes this such a beautifully personal story, makes the emotion so raw, so vivid. It's just amazing in terms of writing style. When we get back to his old writing style, with, where he's like got the brackets, where he's kind of intercepting certain lines with thoughts, and that's just fun. That's just so great. I love that. Like, it's not just great. It's like, it's actually genius. And this book actually luckily does have an actual, like, properly good ending. And I, I it may not be good in the context of, like, the characters, but I thought it was good in context too. Like, an, like, a, like a plot, like a thriller plot. It was a really fun ending. I, I enjoyed that fairly well. I think the last scene was really boring, though. That was kind of... Eh. But it was such a boring last scene. I'm like, we could just finish it like before that. We didn't need that scene. 
I think what people really praised it on was the character, which was pretty great. You know, like it's I'm not gonna lie, it was, it was one of his better character works, and you know, I, I don't I don't disagree with that. But I just got like an issue with where the character went in the situation. Like in this story, we have a character that goes through some sort of deterioration. There's some kind of stuff going on that really messes with his mind. And obviously, it's a Stephen King book, that's gonna happen, but that happens, and I really don't think that this was very realistically done. Because a lot of the characters, you know, like the other ones, that I'm not gonna tell you who they are, but the other ones, they go through a certain mental deterioration because it's Stephen King also. But that was done very vividly, realistically. Absolutely, that makes perfect sense because it's not extreme but then the extreme character he's going down this is this is kind of how the graph goes right it starts going down right that makes sense and then it goes a little bit up and then it goes bam and it to me it's just like that drop is really really badly done and I don't blame people for not noticing this if they haven't noticed it because it's not specifically like a long period of time that drop is so, you know, just immediately steep that it's, it's hard to notice because, you know, the rest of the story is perfectly paced, you know, in terms of how down he goes, but this just one, one part, he just breaks down. And I don't think that what happened to make him break down was enough to actually make him break down because if I, if I paid attention, I'm like, okay, what exactly caused this? And it was really nothing that, at all. So that just ended up happening for some reason. And so that's my really big negative of the plot, while I think every other part of the plot was so fun. Literally, everybody who's saying this book was garbage, but it's such a fun plot, such a good idea to explore, and I'm just really, really happy that I picked this up. I was really, like, avoiding it. I was really afraid of it for a good long time. I was thinking, like, uh, it's gonna be meh, it's gonna be one of his meh classic books, but nah, this is a really, really good book. It's really good. I really like this one. I don't, I, what did I rate it? Never mind that, I'll tell you at the end of the review. But that character work, you know, most of the character work is really interesting because we get really realistic characters. Oh, one more thing, uh, the, the, the son. It was it Danny? Danny is really unrealistic. He's like the one exception. He's only unrealistic in terms of his thoughts. And by that, I mean like vocabulary wise, because some of his thoughts are really, really very, very brilliant. You know, they're like some next level Einstein stuff. You know what I mean? But this is like a five year old kid. And so we're getting like a, some weird, you know, not realistic storytelling here because it's very clear that certain parts of the story segments are, you know, directly made up from the viewpoint of a character and so when you say hey this is the viewpoint of a character you've established that through you know just the natural storytelling that's what happens clearly then we get what well, for, for most for the most part anyway you get very weird situations when you have characters think in weird ways that they wouldn't normally think and so things like the son he's thinking of things that are really smart next level I think I completely butchered that explanation. What I basically mean is that this kid, who was said many times within the story to not be able to recall very, very simple common words, is also said to recall and, and understand like really big concepts, so it's like kind of weird and pulls me out of the story because I'm like, well, he's dumb here, as a kid should be normally, and then he's really smart here, like what's going on? I don't understand, his vocabulary is so high and yet he doesn't know such simple words like what's going on and that's basically it thanks for coming to my ted talk so i don't know how clearly i expressed that but i just mean danny his viewpoint was kind of messed up at certain situations but overall it was really magnificently done i love that part the villain in the story was probably i think it's my favorite villain part from pennywise and maybe the stand because this is just like like i i couldn't think of this you know it's such a fun brilliant it's like a new innovative genius type of villain i will it's like it's so much fun it wasn't fleshed out as it possibly could have been because my god that's like you can completely go out of the rails with that one that's just great but he didn't and i think that was fair because you know it's, it's a small story you don't want to just get out right but it could have been done more and i think what it was was really damn good you know that's what i'm talking about and so I'm probably going to leave my review at that. So thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, please hit that like button down below. I will review this book as a, I believe what it was, 4 out of 5. This is going to be a 4 out of 5 for me. Because of the Daniel situation and the character that I won't talk about that goes mental, mentally boom and like down. You know what I mean? I, I talked about that. So that is kind of why I'm dropping it that one star. And it's not a perfect book. Like there's certain situations where I'm like, okay, well that's just kind of dumb. Like you, like, you don't, that, that's just dumb. And there's a lot of scenes that I think just could have been removed. And stuff like that, that are just not fully 
put through properly in the entire story. You know, because it's a classical tale, I thought it would be better than this. But it's not, it's a, still a really good book, but it's not like best of king, you know? So it's a 4 out of 5 for me, and it's really wonderful. I really, I really actually recommend this to any king fans, because this is like classic, really good king, and it's really short too, it's like 600 pages, right? It's not that long, you can pick this up and you can finish it in like a week. For me anyway so i would really really recommend that for you guys so thank you guys for watching and uh if you haven't subscribed yet please hit that subscribe button down below i would really appreciate it uh and i'm getting like that subscriber count up you know thank you for so many subscriptions while i was gone i'm like at 107 now so that thank you very much and so this video is going to go up for all my stephen king fans i hope you guys enjoyed this let me know what stephen king books you want me to read i will be reviewing the rest of the dark tower really soon as well as uh the sequel to this book i forget dr sleep very very soon so three books total coming out relatively in the future those are definitely on like my soon tbr list and sorry for the very very long video i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye